This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. My name is John Bishop. I work for a company here in Boston called Amp Agency. They're an integrated marketing company. Um, I'm one of the developers that works with them. I'm part of a team of like eight now. We're hiring developers. Um, and I specialize more in WordPress. I do a lot of different things, but uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about custom post types. We use them a lot on our website. I'll give you guys a quick glimpse of that. So for us, we wanted a way to separate our posts and our pages from our services and then link our services to posts and portfolio items. And have a new post type for portfolio items that we can link to posts and have unique page templates. And then for specific types of portfolio items, overwrite the, the query so that it redirects to certain places. And ultimately, if I tried to do all that as pages, it would have been a huge pain. Uh, and basically, with custom post types, uh, me as a developer handing off this website to the marketing department, they can see like a services section, an employee section, a portfolio section, instead of a pages section where everything's kind of jumbled together, where you can't really find exactly where you want to place the content in place. So for our site, it allowed us to easily create uh, our team page that our marketing department can go in and easily update the featured employee without having to contact them, which makes my job easier because I have a lot of other stuff I have to do outside of maintaining our company website. Um, another quick example are case studies. So even though we have we have two different types of case studies based on their taxonomy, they display different ways. So I'll jump into my slides here. And being um, more on the development side uh, for this talk, I want to give you, guys, give you guys something to actually play with and touch. So if you go to johnbishop.com slash cpt.zip, you can download the plugin that created this presentation. It's all made using custom post types and uh, theme template files for the post types. And I'll go through and show you exactly how I created it, um, how I created the template file, how I created the taxonomy, and how I even overwrote some of the default functionality to get exactly what I wanted out of it. Right? So first, a quick overview of custom post types on the back end um, and what they are, what they're good for. So basically, custom post types allow you to create new content types within WordPress. So you have your pages and your posts, but like I was saying, your services or your portfolio items might not fall under just a general page. Maybe you want a custom page template just for your services. Um, you want to always be applied to that service, and you don't want them to have to jump through any hoops to get that template applied to that specific service. Um, custom post types makes it pretty easy. It allows you to easily customize the, the admin interface for actually posting to this post type, so you can hide the editor, um, hide the featured image functionality, and even strip it down to our employee custom post types is just two meta panels, or yeah, two meta panels that have just the first name and some basic questions about the employee. There's no actual editor because we didn't need it. Um, you can organize your custom content with custom taxonomies. So we used this on the AMP site. But on other sites, like say you're doing a, uh, a movie archive, you can organize it by the producer or by the um, whoever's making the film, the actors that are in it. Um, all those could be their own taxonomy that you organize it by, and WordPress will automatically create the template files for you because it always falls back to the generic index page. So if you don't get a custom template, it'll always have something to fall back to, and it just works pretty really easily. Um, you can even create post-to-post -post relationships. So like on the AMP website, we have services that map directly to posts or services that map directly to portfolio items. So if you're on a portfolio item, you can see all the services that that portfolio item falls under. And that could have been a taxonomy where we mirror taxonomies across multiple post types, but being able to map it directly to another post type made it a lot easier. And there's a plugin that does that pretty well because WordPress doesn't do that right out of the box. Hopefully sometime in the future it will. Um, and then, I've mentioned this a couple times, it makes it easy for you to create new templates for your custom post type. And that's actually how I created this uh, presentation. 
So this presentation uses a slides post type and created a custom taxonomy called presentations. So I'll show you guys the workflow in a little bit. But I create a new slide, and for each slide I assign it to under presentations, this presentation uh, you know, category. So this one's called custom post type. And then I created and some other stuff on the front end I'll show you guys as well to get a little bit more customization out of that. Any questions about basics of custom or uh, what custom post types are? And I'll give you some more specific examples in a second. Yeah. It's different than uh, creating your own custom template for pages. Yes. Yes, that's been around for a while and yep. in the codex. Yep. So I haven't come across anything yet in my experience to, to use custom post, post types. So so it's distinctly different and would be what we could have done, and, and let's take that approach, is we could have created a bunch of services under our services page, and then I sort of had to make sure our marketing department knew to assign that services page template to each one of those services pages they created to make sure they all had the same uniform look. Um, just a lot of marketing department, but they're still using WordPress, so creating a custom new post type under our services is a lot easier for them. So, so it's the special strength here of custom post types is if you have content administrators in the back end doing that versus let's say the finished product where you're creating a website. You, I'm, I'm just trying to understand yeah, a little bit okay. there. It definitely streamlines the process a lot too. But yeah. Well, I have a question that might clarify this. So I have a site where I have a blog, I have videos, and I have audio. And I can use categories to separate them within the menu and for searching purposes. But I'm looking at custom post types as a way to create a clear distinction and take advantage of the taxonomy feature, the ability to be able to create custom tags or categories, or I'm not even sure whether that's accurate, but, but create a much um, more specific set of information for the purpose of defining that information within my site. Yes. And that's where the, tax, the, the post types would be better than using categories as far as differentiating. Definitely, and I think in that case it's more preference because there's actually a little bit of debate as far as custom post types being used for that purpose. Uh, WordPress also has a built-in uh, functionality called post formats. So you can create blog posts and then create, say this blog post is a video format and create new template, like unique template files for those formats. And WordPress has standardized those like 10 different formats that you can use. Um, and they try to make that distinct, distinction in the post types codex where they give some examples on the built-in ones and what the post types are supposed to be used for. Um, but ultimately, that's just preference if you wanted to take your videos and links or whatever else out of your posts so they don't show up in your RSS feed, then custom post types are perfect for that. Um, for me, it's really just organization. Uh, I don't have to remember to assign certain page templates, and then I can go back and it's easy to manage that one page template. And I can query it a lot easier, because when I'm as a developer, when I'm writing my WordPress query to pull the post within a certain post type, I, I could do it by taxonomy, but it's just, uh, for me, organization-wise, it works. And uh, I like having that that area on the side that's you know, just for slides or just for, just for portfolio items, instead of going into my pages and sorting through all the different pieces of content that I probably could have grouped together to better. So, best I got for that. So, along the lines of what they're actually good for. Um, so they do try to clarify on the site that uh, stuff like links and galleries and videos, you could use posts and just use post formats to make sure that they're still in your RSS feed, but they look and feel a little bit different. Um, but some things it is good for, like portfolios, uh, events. So if you didn't want your events showing up in your blog post, you wanted its own area with a calendar, they could work great for that. Any database or collection of information, a movie database, a book database, cars, uh, forums, um, some simple forums use, uh, custom post types, uh, ticket systems, ad management. Uh, I built a HubSpot WordPress plugin that has a built-in call to action manager, uses custom post types. And basically, anywhere you need a new content type. So it's not necessarily a page that's going to look like the rest of your pages, or a post that's going to be in your blog, then uh, you probably use a custom post type. So, I'm going to fly through the code because this is stuff that you guys can get off the website. 
Um, the only thing, I also want to point out a few small things. Um, when you're creating your custom post types in code, make sure you're doing it on a net so that WordPress has all the functions available to it to actually create the post type that's available to all the other plugins out there. Um, this is not the only way to create custom post types. There are plugins that do it for you, but uh, being on the, more, on the development side, I want to talk about this side of it. So uh, this is what you get. Um, and like I said, these, all this will be on the website afterwards. If you're trying to find this specifically, um, or more information about actually creating your own post types, uh, at the bottom of each slide, I got where I got the code, so you can grab it yourself in the next time. Um, and I really think that the code for this plugin is your best bet for figuring, out, figuring it all out. Um, it's the combination of three or four different plugins that I've developed over the last three years. I've kind of brought them all together. Some of the kits I really couldn't find online very easily um, to make this plugin. So I created my new post type. Uh, I don't know how familiar you are with WordPress Query, but this is basically the core of WordPress and how it works, the loop. Um, and similar to what I'm doing for this, uh, I'm actually saying what post type I want to pull in and how many posts per page. So this plugin, I'm pulling in all the posts, so negative one, to say I want all of them, and then my post types obviously slide. There's a bunch of other information you can put in here just to control the order. Um, but ultimately, once you have the loop, you can use all the template tags you normally use inside the loop. And once again, you can find this stuff online. So, a couple of things I wanted to point out. Uh, I feel like a lot of people ignore custom post types just because you're not using them. Um, it doesn't mean other people aren't. So, when you're developing plugins for the WordPress repository, for example, if you do a plug, if you develop something that inserts content into the content of their posts, <coughs> query or check to see what uh, custom post types they already have installed or are actually using. So they have the option of turning that functionality on and off for that for those post types. So one of my plugins is uh, Socialize. It adds social bookmarks to your content, but and a couple other plugins that do that don't give you the ability to say, I don't want my social bookmarks on my events page or my portfolio page. I only want it on the posts and the pages. And that's only give you the option to do post the pages because they don't want to guess what you have. But it's really easy to guess what you have. Um, and these are just a couple ways of going about it. So uh, this basically, the first one just grabs the actual post type name. Um, and the second one checks to see if it, a specific post type exists. So like, I used it if the post type exists to integrate with uh, my call to action plugin to see if the call to action exists then I can add some stuff to it or remove some stuff from the filter so that I'm not adding extra garbage to it. But uh, just be aware of other custom post types in general. Um, you can also modify custom post types. So my call to action plugin doesn't have featured image functionality built into it out of the box. It might actually, I don't know, but just say it didn't. Um, I can, one, check to see if it has that functionality and if it doesn't, then I can add it in myself. So this is stuff that you normally do when you're actually creating the custom post type. You say this post type supports the editor, the author, featured image, um, revisions, everything that you want the user interface to have. Um, after the fact, other plugins can manipulate that and say, well, no, we don't want him to use the authors. We're going to take that away. Um, not a lot of use cases for that, but for something like BuddyPress, where there's like deep integration and you can control a lot of stuff, uh, that's where it becomes handy. You can remove functionality from the forms or something like that if they use custom post types. So this is the last slide I want to show you before I show you the actual code. And I want to show you some things I did in the back end to give you better understanding. But uh, when you create a custom post type, you can add these template files to your theme, and WordPress just knows to use these files for your for these post types. So for example, if I wanted to have an individual slide, I would do single dash slide.php, slide being the name of my um, custom post type. And WordPress, when I access that directly, will use that template file. Same with the archives. Um, and the taxonomies, uh, which is what I'm using for this uh, plugin. Um, 
logic is the same thing. So if I'm doing anything within a specific taxonomy, it knows to use that template file, uses it across all the terms within that taxonomy. So uh, I'll show you guys the back end of this. So I created the slides custom post type, which you can see right here. And then for each slide in my presentation, it's just a new post. And I've added the presentation taxonomy to the slides table, along with the order. This is the menu order. I just um, this is built-in functionality. I just told it I wanted to display there so that I can easily sort my slides. So for each individual slide, it's just like regular content. I stripped it down, so it's really only just the editor, the attributes for my order, and the author, and my custom taxonomy. So if I wanted to create a new presentation, I could just click Add New Presentation, assign this slide to that presentation, and then this would be the only slide in that presentation. So if I go over to the taxonomy side, presentation, you'll see it's the only one that's there. It shows you the number of slides I have within that custom post there. Right. So any questions about this so far? I want to show you guys a little bit of code. I won't try and describe it too much, but some interesting bits I've kind of run across over the years, some things I didn't think I could do, I eventually found out how to do. I want to share with you guys. So these two files I have right here are everything that's running this um, presentation. So uh, I'm not going to get too into how to create plugins in this, but uh, the top of this is just the basic plugin made information if you're going to submit to WordPress.org. And at the top, I just grab uh, the plugin directory, save it to a constant so that I can use it later. Don't worry about that, it's just a display an image. Um, so the first thing I did was create a function that runs on init that creates my custom post name. You'll see I set all the labels, so I have all my custom slide labels that you get when you post a new slide. It'll say you add a new slide or you add a slide to your presentation. Um, and then below it, the args, this is what gets passed to my register post type. And this is, these are most of what you have available to you when you're creating new post uh, types. Uh, the rest of it you can find in uh, wordpress.org. Um, and again, I don't want to explain that too much because that would take a while and it's all very well documented on, on wordpress.org. So this just creates my custom post type. And just with this bit right here, I could go in and create new slides and they would just use the default WordPress templates. Like that would be, that would be it and that would work. So people could use this for a portfolio just to segment it off and you know have it separate. So taking it a step further, adding my taxonomies, that's this whole chunk. Uh, same deal, uh, go through and make sure my labels are what I want them to be, and then register my taxonomy and assign it to my custom post that I've created, CPT slide. You realize I named it CPT slides and not just slides? Uh, if I decided to install another slides plugin, what's to say they don't use the name slides too? And then the two clash. It's a good idea when, one, if you're developing plugins like this, where it's all procedural functions, namespace everything. Because uh, ultimately you're battling for, you know, uh, space with all the other plugins that are built this way, and you don't want to have any collisions, you don't want it to be on you, ultimately you want it to be on the other plugin that didn't properly namespace their plugin. Um, usually I don't develop in the plugins like this, usually I wrap them in classes, just makes it easier, but uh, just for keeping it simple, it's like this. <laughs> this is something that a lot of people don't do, and uh, I started doing it in some of my plugins, and I think it's just because people don't know it exists. So in the top right hand corner in the WordPress admin is a help button. And how many people knew it was there, first of all? all right. So basically, for every page in the WordPress admin, there's a pretty good help and it points you to documentation if you don't know what's going on in that page. A lot of plugin authors don't know this exists and don't use this to their advantage. And when they're building something like custom post types, they don't add in 
their custom contextual help that, this, that explains what the custom post is for, how it's used. So I include that in here, so it's a good template if you're trying to create your own custom post types. And it's uh, pretty simple. So actually, sorry, down here. Um, basically, this just gets added um, to all the contextual help. And you're basically just checking to see what screen you're on. And if you're on a specific screen, just return the content or whatever you want to display and it displays your custom help right there for you. So, I don't want to get into this, but I want to put it in here for you guys. Uh, I don't like to stop at just creating my custom post types. So, by default, out of the box, this didn't have the presentation or the order sorting option at the top. You have to go in and add that in yourself, and then you have to tell it, tell WordPress, make these buttons clickable, and then you have to tell it, okay, this is how you're going to sort it when I actually click on you. Um, and doing that's easy sometimes and not easy other times. I'll show you guys uh, what I mean by that. So uh, here I'm just telling it what columns I want it to have, so it's a good place to actually remove columns I don't want up there. Then I tell it what information to actually display if, I'm, if it's actually pinging or displaying that information. So in this case, I just straight grab the menu order built in functionality. Then for the presentations, I go for each post. I look at the ID and I grab the most recent term, which is basically just the taxonomy, the presentation, and display it. And then there's this order by stuff. So once I have this stuff populated, I can't just click the button. It doesn't actually know what to do with my data. It doesn't know how to rearrange it. I have to tell it what to use for the order by query in the SQL statement that it generates. Um, so the easy version of this is right here, because we're querying the post table. Uh, menu order is in the post table, so all I have to do is say order by menu order. That one's simple. Um, a more complex one might be if you're in the post meta table and you're they're occurring based on post meta keys, you have to do a join on that table and find the value that way. And then to make it even harder, if you're trying to do it based off taxonomies, this is what I found. So I understand a small subset of that. Uh, this is basically lots of searching and um, Scribune has a couple of awesome plugins that I use. And this is something you post on his blog and it works. So uh, I've been using that. I want to share this with you guys. And then uh, where I told you you have to actually make the header thing clickable, this is literally where I just say, these are going to be clickable, sortable headers. Otherwise, it's just regular text. You can't actually click it or do anything. You just display the presentation. In this case, if I had multiple presentations, I want to be able to sort my presentation and group them all together. And then the uh, last thing I did here, um, I wanted to show off a couple of the examples I showed you guys already about get post type, um, the WordPress query, and roll into something unique. So by default in WordPress, if I click on use, so like using custom post types, it's going to try and take me to the template for that page, but it doesn't exist. And well, it does exist. It falls back to index, but I didn't want it to display the individual slide. I wanted it to always redirect to the taxonomy archive for the presentation that it's within. So I actually, when it detects that I'm trying to get to a custom post type, then it checks to see, is this an archive already? If it's not an archive, it goes and pulls all of the uh, posts within that presentation and counts to see where it is in order. And then it redirects me to the presentations, uh, the presentation, the archive, with my slide appended to it. So. This slide order 20 is probably somewhere in the middle. If I click view, it automatically redirects me to the fourth slide in. So in here you can see, like I just said, I'm getting the post type, seeing if it's my post type. Then I'm checking to see if it's not an archive. So it means it's a single page. Then I go through and I grab all the terms associated with that post, which are only going to be the one presentation. You only use one presentation per slide. So I break it immediately, grab my, my hyperlink, then I go through and loop through all the posts and check to see when the ID matches my ID. And I know that's like the number slides in it is in the presentation. 
literally append that to the URL and then do my redirect. So that if anyone tries to access, even myself, one of those slides directly, I get redirected to the archive to that specific slide. So that's all it take, took on the plugin side. Um, I thought a bit about baking this all into a plugin, but I wanted to show off a bit about uh, how the theme templates work. So I created the taxonomy CPT slides presentation. So this is back to that syntax I was showing you where it's taxonomy dash and then your taxonomy slug. It's the slug that you use to set up that taxonomy. And that slug in this case is CPT slides underscore presentation. So anything that's within that uh, taxonomy uh, for presentations is going to use this template file. And I literally copied and pasted this off of Google HTML5 slides. I did very minimal editing, um, just some Boston WordPress branding. And all I did was add in my, uh, well, so instead of doing uh, my, a new WordPress query, because um, WordPress is going to run its own query, I just modified the one that it's going to try to do. So by default, it's, it's, it knows to try and get all of my posts, but it's going to try and do it in descending order based on the date. So all I tell it is grab it based on my menu order, ascending, and grab all of them. And that displays all of them in a list, formats them the way I want in different articles, and that just automatically creates my slide. So. That's why I like custom post types, because all that work in the back end to actually create custom post type, the front end took me about five minutes. And I had this, what I think is a pretty slick uh, little presentation. So, some stuff to remember. Uh, when you're using custom post types, specifically when you're programming them yourself, if you're using a plugin to create them, this isn't a problem, because plugins are usually aware of this. But, uh, WordPress needs to refresh its rewrite rules. So the first time you create your custom post type using code and try to access your post directly, it might give you a 404. Um, the easiest way to fix that is to literally go to your permalinks page. And that automatically runs that flush rewrite rules code. Otherwise, you could add it in yourself on, um, when you register a plugin, but actually activate a plugin, there's a hook that you can use to run, uh, set up defaults and run some code. That's a great place to run your plus, plus rewrite rules so when they activate your plugin, you know it's going to have fresh rewrite rules with your custom post type. And, and you know, you actually just visited it. I thought, I thought it was originally you had to update it, but at the top of the page, so the second you visit it, you're good. Um, and then uh, lastly, prefix your, your name with a short name space. Um, this goes for custom post types, and if you're writing code like you just saw on the plugin, uh, namespace all your functions, and uh, class the same thing, namespace your class as appropriate too, so you don't fly into anything else. Um, so yeah, I think the best way to really get this down as a developer is look at the code that I put up there. Um, that's how I do it. I have like a couple plugins I made in the past, and constantly referencing that. I think it's really important to have like good code that you can go back and look at. Um, and if you guys have any ideas or anything with this, maybe how to expand it, I was thinking about throwing it up on GitHub and maybe having the first Boston WordPress submitted uh, plugin. That's all for me. So. Any questions about custom post types in general? We have some extra time. So, yeah. so you mentioned that you were showing the template page and how to invoke the custom post type from that. Um, as a way to sort of demonstrate how this would tie into a theme. You also implied that it was possible to do that without the template page. Yeah. I didn't you know you could do Is it possible to take yeah. over the whole view of the page just from the plugin? Yep. So <coughs> I'll, I'll jump in and show you an example of that. So one of uh, the clients I had the pleasure of working with at Hand Agency is uh, Skin Condoms. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, they have a, their site's built on WordPress, and they wanted uh, the, the new skin branded condom that's a new section on their website. I thought that's really cool. I could do that as a custom post type because they're already editing their one WordPress install. Why create a separate install when I can have it all based off of you know, skin from there? So I created this skin site template, or skin site plugin, and 
in there, I actually, so yeah, if my post type is equal to skin, I actually do a template redirect and include my own template. So uh, I actually created my own templating system for this plugin because I didn't want to use the default WP head and WP footer, something I didn't really think about going into it. Uh, so I found myself actually writing code to go through and actually remove filters. I'm going through removing all the filters that I don't want. Uh, because I don't, I didn't want sharing buttons at the top. I didn't want they were doing a little you know, latest code. I wanted mine. Um, so there's just something cool and different I could do with custom post type to keep it uh, all under one roof. And ultimately, it worked out great. It's easy to maintain. Um, but yeah, that's how I did. So I'm sorry I got chosen. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Uh, will slides be up on the uh, slide? Yeah. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna one put this plugin on my website so we can get to the slides directly, maybe create like a PowerPoint version of it. Um, and then, yeah, we'll have everything else on the site and links to resources. Uh, that's something I'm battling with myself. I'm trying to find that like perfect plugin or class to work with that helps me like rapidly develop out custom meta panels. I've developed my own that I'm using right now, which I basically add functionality to as I need, need it. So I heard like Alchemy is supposed to be really good, and uh, um, I know there's plugins that do it for you that add all that stuff in. Yeah. Um, but that, that's a whole other topic to get into. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Have you seen with um, like user permissions? Uh, yeah. There's actually when you're setting it up, um, it's one of the options you can pass into it. I believe it's on uh, capabilities. So let's double check that. Yes. So basically, you check the capability type. So if the current user has the ability to post. Then he can see this post type. Um, you could make it a lot higher. So uh, I think manage is like uh, manage options is like admin. Um, yeah. So if you go into uh, there's a codex page for capabilities that has a list of all the capabilities and different users they fall under. Um, you can even create custom capabilities and throw them right there. Yep. Um, when I want to create a page that will be the archive page for the taxonomy, um, is there a way to like easily I'll um, assign a page to be the archive because the way I do it is that I hard code the uh, archive link into that page. But I think in play, if I want to go back and change the archive page, then I can't really do it easily. Yeah. Um, so it's going to use your the, the, basically the default rewrite structure. And you could do a rewrite. I uh, actually did a couple of them on the BAM site to do exactly that. So I had these certain archives I wanted to use certain specific URLs. Um, and it wasn't easy. So uh, start look, look into um, WordPress rewrite and different ways you can go about that, and it is possible that way. Um, basically, you just need to uh, like look at the query, find out if it's requesting the certain post type that archive, and then uh, rewrite the query the way you need it. Um, and there's a couple ways you actually go about doing that. Um, but yeah, it will, it will suffice, but it is possible. WordPress rewrites are probably the, the thing I most hate about working in WordPress. I try to avoid them whenever I can. So. Yeah. Anyone else have questions? Yeah, David. Uh, so some plugins out there, like an SEO plugin, let's say for example, you know, it adds a custom meta box to pages and uh, posts. Um, when you have a new custom page template, how do you add in that custom meta box to because it, it may be like a user-generated custom post type that they put in their functions, or it might be a plugin that generated a new one. How do you do that inside of a plugin? That might be too specific. But. Yeah, and I touched on that. I think a lot of that falls on the plugin author um, to build to write better plugins that account for custom post types. If they're going to include something like if, you know, like Yoast WordPress SEO, there should be this, I think there is an option in there where you can select the different post types you want that data box to display on. So, so you detect it and then it's true, yeah. You basically do like, I think it's get custom post type because it gives you, uh, I think you say whether or not you want to return an array of names or an array of objects. And then you can iterate through it from there and figure out what's what. And yeah. So then that's, that's, if you take anything away from this, that's probably one of the biggest things as, a, as developers and plugin developers is be aware of this functionality and how it interacts and conflicts with other plugins and be conscious of that. Uh, ultimately, you're creating a better user experience for the plugin, and then you have to do less support after the fact, trying to figure out why your plugin is not working well with every other plugin out there. So. Any other questions? 
great appointment to spare.